the very first episode of Ears to the Street, the podcast, and my very first guest, I can't pronounce, I can't pronounce the last name right, but the first name is Miss Terry, right? Terry Waggle? Hi there, yep. Close, Waggle. Waggle, okay. Huh. Waggle, Miss Waggle. <laughs> well, <laughs> like I said, I'm a little nervous here, so this is our, our first episode of Ears to the Street, the podcast. I'm gonna play a little music, get a little music going here. But uh, hey, where do we begin? Where do we begin with you, Miss Terry? <laughs> well, originally, where are you? Where are you from? Originally you from, from Florida, Boca Raton, and grew up. Okay. What part of Florida? Boca Raton. Boca. Boca. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 Spanish settlers settled there. It means the mouth of the rat. <laughs> so you was uh, all right, where is uh, Deerfield Deerfield Beach? Yeah, is that where the you next was, town up? Is that where you grew up at? No, I grew up in Boca. Boca. I was, I was born in um, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. And we were living in Pompano Beach at that time. Okay. And then we moved to when I was like eight or nine. The whole family moved to Boca Raton. So. Okay. So at at what age did you? What age did you know that you wanted to be a, a star, so to speak? I don't know. I guess I'd have to say about 15. 15. I know from from your, as I Google you, I, I know you see this, that you was, um, your first couple of gigs was Saks Fifth, Fifth Ward, was it Fifth Street? Yeah. You was in the ad for that. How was that? Uh, like, how old were you when you did that? Oh, gosh. Old enough to drive, so I had to be somewhere... <laughs> 16 or 17 years Ooh. old. So it's like, what was a, what is a, like, let's, let's take it way back a little bit before that. So right. what is a, what is a, from zero to 15 year old Terry, like, what is Terry like? What are you like as a, as a kid growing up in a oh, American kid, was into sports. Um, what sports did you play? Uh, track. Really good at track and gymnastics. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So I was very active. So you did a lot of, I'm assuming that you did a lot of uh, theater in, in school and thespian and thespian, you were thespian? Good, good sports. Good. My father was a basketball player. He oh. was tall. How tall was your father? Six, four. Six, and how five. tall are you? I'm short. The older he gets. Well, you know, we the shorter some, I get. <laughs> sometimes we get the good genetics, sometimes we don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> It just really just depends on on, on which one get that 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 first, right? (laughs) (laughs) Whichever one get that little bit faster, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, so you started you started doing modeling at the age of 15, right? Right. All right. When did it? When did was it just modeling at first, or was it just just modeling? modeling. What got you into? Well, actually, went to a a finishing school, which was modeling school. Okay. And I I trained for almost two years there. Where was that at? That was in Fort Lauderdale. In Fort Lauderdale. You go to La Solis Boulevard, which is like half hour from my house. Oh, okay. There on Saturdays. My mom tried to keep me in every activity that there was because I'm so ADD. <laughs> I keep her focused. And right, right, right. Doing stuff. And so I went to school Ooh. six days a week for about two years at a time there until I graduated from John Robert Powers. Okay. Modeling school. So when did when did you cross over into acting? Like is in like some of the oh, like your like your extra roles that you were in? Like when did right. you? Well, what? I was I think I was seventeen when I was in Scarface. Uh-huh. I was just um, back. Hold on, let me let me let me, let me cut you off real quick. You talking about Al Pacino them Scarface? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I know, and I and I'm a very I have yep. verified this because I've seen it. Yes. You know I mean because it's. It's a rarity that, you know what I mean, you're, you're one of the people that have voiceovers on YouTube, which right. you, I mean, people have done from you. So I've, right. like, I've, I've seen, like, the, I've seen some of the clips and the movies that you've been in. So could you name some of the movies that you've been in? Sure. Scarface, <laughs> Where the Boys Are, Glitch, um, oh, Jesus, uh, Predator Two, right? Predator Two. Okay, let me yeah. let me, um, let, me, let, me <laughs> let me go to, let me Google you. I didn't so, do my homework because you it's know been what I mean. So long ago. Hey, that's tons, that's a, tons of films. <laughs> what what? And you I mean 
like I told you, you like you like a you like a hero to me because you know I me. Mean? I've always I've wanted to I've wanted to I kind of started off acting in in high school and right. everything like that. You know I me. Mean? I've only been in one movie. I was a little extra. You know I me. Mean? A movie called the um, The Ditch Digger's Daughter. Yeah, where was that was, shot? It was shot in Wilmington, North Carolina. No. And it was basically about a. Um, it was basically a film in like the back in the days when it was like the segregation days, and oh, the guy he was yeah. a, a professional ditch digger. Right. He ended up having about I think he had about five or six daughters, right. and he wanted his daughters to kind of grow up in the. It was growing up. And they grew up in the area where it was like a lot of racism and right. whites went with whites and blacks went in blacks and areas. So right. he wanted his kids to have a better life. So he moved his kids into an all white neighborhood and right. sent them to that that type of school to get their education. And, and right. basically was saying how, you know what I mean, it was hard for them, but they ended up, he wanted his kids to have the best. So when he ended up doing that, they ended up all becoming like successful nurses, doctors and things like that. Right. So. I'll we'll have to Google that. What's the name of that again? The Ditch Digger's Daughter. Okay. Yeah, it's it's it is yeah. it's just. And it's will more, I see you on that? You'll see me. You'll see me briefly. You know what I mean? You'll see me in the, in the party <laughs> scene, like ah. You know what I mean? It's just it's a brief moment, like bye. You know what I mean? Like that's it. You know what I mean? You you gotta pause. So you can actually pause. You gotta pause, and, and you'll see, see me. You'll see a young me. You know what I mean? A young, you know what I mean? Seventeen, eighteen year old me. You know what I mean? With the fresh. No baby, no baby, no baby, no facial hairs, you know what I mean? The young boy hair, you know what I mean? So, yes, it's, it's cool to, it's, it's good to, it's good to have a, as artists, it's good to have a, um, a dialogue, not necessarily a dialogue, but a, a, I don't know how to say it, like more like a, like me as an artist, like I have, it's, it's good for me to have a back catalog, like a catalog. Like I've done music in South Dakota for over, I want to say about 20 years. Right. So, you know what I mean? It's been times where I had eras of music with these certain guys, these certain guys, and that's right. basically what this podcast is going to be, you know what I mean? So it's going to, right. it's going to bounce from, yep. bounce from area to area. So, you know what I mean? So I got a lot of my old, older music. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Good. For artists, for uh, an actress and a model like you, it's good to have that because you have something that you can kind of look right. back in and you can kind of say, hey. You kind of just put I all that you. stuff in a closet. <laughs> it's a big closet. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of just waiting, I guess, to, to pull all that stuff out. Well, sure, you, you know what I mean? We got, so got the platform, stuff. you know what I mean? I got the equipment, know, so if you, you know, want to get it. I don't even look at it. I mean, we like, can put you in a museum this. down here. Only you know? Once in a while, if somebody brings it up, then, right, right. then I can talk about it and talk about my experiences and it, it's it's good it's well good. let's talk about some of those experiences what was the experiences like working working in the movies like what was it like you know what i mean being well there? it was kind of boring being on sets you know because like with predator 2 we were on that set for almost two i would say it was longer than two weeks but we did that one scene where the predator comes down and right. i played the colombian drug lord's girlfriend he so that glass in the background of that penthouse, you right. know, that they showed, uh -huh. they, it, I mean, we had to get it perfect. Every day we blocked that off for two weeks before we'd actually film to get the lighting perfect, to get sound perfect, right. to mostly lighting. Um, and we did two, two takes and then where they blew out the glass from that. Right. It was so freaking scary in there. There was no acting needed because when those pres predators and Ralstas guys came right. in, it was like I was scared. So you was literally you was really scared. Like yeah, yeah I was she's scared. a great actress. She's was really scared. scared. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they blew out the windows, God, there were two hundred fifty thousand uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of candy. That's oh. what it was. Candy. Man. So I was running and I got like the candy in the back of my <laughs> calf cut up a little wow. bit from it because of the explosion right right and stuff and, that's crazy and then we were picking it up between takes and eat it <laughs> <laughs> wow. that was really fun that was with danny glover right, um, right let's see that was with uh what is that crazy dude so have you have you met i mean i know i know this is kind of a rhetorical question but who are some of the stars that you've met i mean through movies and um george clooney 
Um, Bruce Willis. Of course, you gotta um, see you know, Bruce. Michael J. Pollard. Um, Elliot Gould. Um, Leif Garrett. Okay. Um, a lot of big names. I see it. You know I what I mean? I swam with Bruce Willis. <laughs> Me and another playmate for... <laughs> oh, we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna slip into that one right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, we gonna slip into that right there. You know what I'm saying? We gonna slip into that right there. We gonna hold it up. You know what I'm saying? That's right. He was slipping up with Demi. So. Oh man, Bruce, don't do that, Bruce. Too late, Bruce. <laughs> it's all good, but you know what I mean? It's that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's all really about living life and enjoying life, man. Right. To being, no, to I being had some a, great experiences, and I met so many, so many people. I can see like I, I watched some of, like I watch a lot of your interviews and like some of like some of the, like some of the documentaries and stuff on you like I like I I don't I see a, I see two sides of you but I also see like I also see the Terry that the world has seen from you know what right. I mean the movies and everything that's going on with you right. in life because you got that personality you got that energy around you it comes around you know what I mean right. it's it's infectious you know what I mean so. Right. I mean, and you always smiling. You never in a bad mood. So you I mean it's always it's it's good to be successful at the same time. Be humble and yep. and continue to stay humble because you know what I mean. You could be a little arrogant. You know what I mean. You, you know what I mean. I've been, you don't know me. I've been in the movies. You know what I mean. Scarface, Google me. You know what I mean. But a Google me. I've always been humbled. I think that's beautiful. That's why I've lasted so long. So, you know what I mean? Let's get in. Let's, let's, I mean, let's, let's, what we gonna, let's, let's skip it, you know what I mean? So, you have no, huh? You yeah. know? So, how, how, what, what, what got you? What, what, I mean, let me, let me bring my, my excitement level down. That's a little too joyous when yeah. I say it. But, you know what I mean? It's a playmate. Right. What was that like? What was that? It's that's great. Like? It was really good. I got the first gig from them. I had been in Paris for about a year and a half, two years, and I was modeling over there. Right. And so I built up my book over there, and it was really good. So when I came back to the States, um, the, a modeling agency that I was with represented me right. um, in Miami, and they were casting for see-through fashion. They mm -hmm. casted about 500 people, and I was picked. That's bad. 500 bad ones, and you was the baddest one they picked. Yeah. Huh? They picked me. And you got the, you got, like I said, you got the, you got the personality, you got the energy. I mean, you, you, we had fun, dude. you talk yeah. shit too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watched a lot of some of them old school interviews. I'm like, damn, she was, <laughs> she can handle herself, dude. She can handle herself. I'm like, damn. I also want to talk about one of the, you was also part of one of my, uh, one of my favorite shows of all time. What? Now that I just found out and I Googled that you was a part of 227, I know that the black delegation is going to love that. So all my African-Americans out there, you know what I mean? We got an OG legend out here from 227. Tootie and all, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking, I mean, everybody, 227. If you, if you haven't seen it before, you know what I mean? Growing up in the 80s and 90s, you know what I mean? The way that the culture was, the music was, you know what I mean? You got... It was so different from what it is today. I mean, we actually had fun. And there oh, was yeah. less things to have to worry about, you know? I don't even think we had, maybe by the 80s, DUI. Right. People did drugs freely, and they were responsible to get up the next day, you know? It Facts. was just, it, it, Facts. it was just, it was so different. And nobody judged people yeah. as much as they do now. Now it's... It's a whole different, it's yeah. a whole different world, you know what I mean? Social yeah. media, you know what I mean? The way you can really... You can reach out to people without even having a. You ain't. Yeah, you know, you can reach out to people from the your room. The best was like from '85 to probably '97, and then yeah, it started yeah, yeah. gradually to where I don't know. It just was different. Yeah. And because of computers and stuff, everything became massive. Yeah. To and where you see the difference in film and. It changed. Yeah. How it, how everything is changing. I mean, from you have. Small camera crews, big camera crews, right. big productions, bigger, you know what I mean? More technology, I mean, like it's, right. I'm, I know for me personally, I'm, I'm 44, so it's, 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 the technology has blown my mind from the time from the music era that I grew up right. in. And, you know I mean, I grew up on a lot of the stuff that you, that you was a part of, you know what right. I mean? The skull faces. You right, know what I mean? so the they were probably at cassettes at your age. Yeah, Because I yeah. went to the 8-track teams. Yeah. 
yeah. to the cassettes, to the... My the, dad the used to have the real those, reels. Yep, <laughs> the discs that, that they have now. Yeah. They'll never scratch. Hell, they scratch. Oh, yes, they do. I, I, yeah, I, I still do. burn CDs, let me not lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, still, I'm still back in the days, you know what I mean? But with the way that the music is now it's so easy for artists to put their music on YouTube or put their music on this stream and, and become yeah. millionaires right. damn near overnight, you know what I mean? As opposed to going through the grind and the struggles like, you know what I mean, our actress like yourself who goes through it and you go through the good, the bad, the ugly and right. you get to, you know what I mean, the points where you have good and you have bad. So right. you know what I mean, we can discuss the good, we you can just discuss have to the, the with all the bad that happens makes you go on to be a stronger person. This is a fact. This yes, is a it fact. is a fact. You don't want it, you don't want to experience. And I, and that's where if we can if we can talk about that, we can talk about those experiences. You know what I mean? Because I know that after you mean I, as I was saying earlier, you know, you was a part of one of my one of my greatest shows, Married with Children. You know right. what I'm saying? Play Jay and Mary with Children. Go together like a horse and carry this, I tell you, bro. That's my shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have They one. were so much fun. So what was, what was that What was that experience well, like? Well, we'd come in on a Monday. We had five days till we actually, four days to rehearse, and the fifth day is when we shot. Okay. And then it was live studio audience. So we'd sit in a, like an office, kind of like this, and right. we'd have tables, and there, they had a lot of writers for right. that show. Because that was Fox's first, first that, yeah. night soap that they had. That was so when they kind of did drop the old oh, yeah, well, they just Bart started Simpson and all that too. They started that yeah. station. Yeah. And they all their money that Fox made off of was married with children. It was a good percentage of it. That's what imagine, started. Imagine, man, that was a. So they had over twenty writers that wrote two or three each wrote for each character. Right, right. And stuff, and so they would sit there and, and you know. Um, we would run lines and we do that good portion of the four days. Right. So, and then live studio and audience was the best. That was like the greatest. That's where I think I got, is my favorite to do live stuff because <laughs> if you mess up, hello. Oh right, you get that live reaction. Oh well. That's something that <laughs> I've can always. laugh about it. <laughs> I've always, I mean, I've, I've, as a, as a young and growing up, I never. It's high to have that audience how right. they reacted to what you say or what you look like or right. it was a real high so what was like what did you what were did you it says you had a recurring role right. so was I it was just Jade in the, uh, sh uh, i was the aerobic instructor next to the shoe store so i constantly oh. so they throw me in in ratings so okay. twice a year for their station get boost okay and i was their rating ratings girl so that's basically just all that you did for the show was just yep. that part? Okay. Yep. Man, I yep. definitely remember that, you know. Yep. Hey, Mr. Shoe Man. <laughs> Thinking about you. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> great I, I think that that was, that by far was one of the greatest shows that I've ever, I mean, you put, you could put that up with, you know what I mean, say like a Roseanne as far as comedy wise, you know what I mean? Right. Like, but they, like, yeah, Al Bundy was hilarious, man. Such like, good writers, uh, and they delivered so, so much, so many things that right. were happening in everyday life. Right, right. That usually uh, networks couldn't really touch, but they would do it so that it was smoothed out, kind of like Lucille Ball and Ricky. Right, Carter, right. Lucy and Ricky, that Ricky. joke. Yeah, yeah. Back then, where they would do that slapstick, you know? <laughs> You're right. And it was cool. I mean, it was so much fun working with them. Little um, Bud. Well, I'm pretty sure Mr. Bud had a, he had a real life crush <laughs> like on you, you know what I mean? years old. And I remember his mom had to be in the set with him. Hey. And so she came up to me, she knew I was a playmate, and she says, whatever you do, don't give, Bud. if Bud asked you for your Playboy magazine, do not give it to him because he's only 13. And I said, oh, I promise. Are we talking about Rat Master B, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so the next time I was on the show, which was probably three months later down the line, and Al comes up to me, Ed O'Neill, and he knocks on my dressing room door, and he goes, Terry, hey, you got one of those Playboy magazines for me? And I go, yeah, I'll bring it in tomorrow. 
He goes, yeah, don't sign it. Just sign your name. Don't sign it to anybody. Just sign your name. Okay. I'll okay. pull it fast. Well, no. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. So the next day, I give it to him. And then the next day, his mother came up to me and said, I told you not to give that magazine to that boy. He's only 13 years old. I said, I didn't give him a magazine. Right. And then I realized, damn I'll, it, out. I'll. I'll put you. I'll, I'll, I'll pull the whoopty whoop on you. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I was mad. AKA Mr. Co the coach of the, coach of the, the Cowboys and, and Lil Jack. That's a Giants. good story, though. <laughs> a really good story. Yeah, yeah he, he pulled a fast one on it. But, and you know he I mean? used to, like, in our dressing room, because they were modeled, uh, remodeled so many times that right. there had to be a high shag carpet in that room, and they took it out to what wood floors. And so the crack under the door was like this. I'm not kidding you. Right. And so Thursdays were dress rehearsals. So they give us our costumes and, and try on, and, and I hear giggling under the door, and it was, uh, who do you think? Bud. Oh, Bud. <laughs> Looking at me getting dressed. Rap Master B. I shook my head. Ed hey, O'Neal. I'm telling you. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al Bundy, man. That's, that. that show is so funny because how many, how many husbands actually think what he think, what he actually says to Peg, and how many wives actually I'm sure say, I mean, like or right think on. what they say that because you know these I mean? writers were everyday people, you right, know, right, that could write. That could, so that they one, were like, writing. You know, if I could tell my wife what I really want to tell her, <laughs> their own experiences, which which made it really real, right, you right, know? right. Because every time you were in an episode, it was something a point. They, they were trying to get across. Right, right, right. <laughs> and they did. Because oh, it was a message in everyone, but it was bad. It was a magical crew. I mean, yeah, yeah. They were magical. That was, that was, that was, yeah, that's probably one of the greatest shows of all time in my in my heart, man. Right. Personally, because, I mean, it's, it's just hilarious. I mean, it brought a lot of me and my, my like, my father and my family together. You know right. what I mean? Every week, you know what I mean? We sit down and watch that. My album, dad you know what too. Bart Simpson, you know what I mean? The parents watching it or just kind of catching a glimpse or, or sitting down there watching it after, you know what I mean, after a football game and then the bunnies come on and, right. you know what I mean? Well, so, I met him because Playboy had lots at that time. They had everything in the world open to them and to us girls. Right. And so Hef got involved in uh, singing Playmates. So there was a couple of us that sang in Vegas. Right. We had a big show and they decided to take it to Monte Carlo. So we went that summer. And we went six weeks, I think. And uh, Albert came to see our first show. <laughs> Prince Albert, huh? Yep. Oh, Wasn't man. really interested in him. Yeah, I mean, I seen from yeah. I seen from the interview. You know what I mean? Like how? I, a question about that interview. Like, what was your mind state at that point in time? Because I could tell from the interview you were like extremely I mean you could tell you were young. You were extremely flirty. Like your eyes, like the way you talk. But you know I me, mean? you had so much. You had so much character in your, in your yeah. conversation. Like you mean you was you was controlled in your element, and that's yeah. like that's that's what I that's what I enjoyed about watching your interviews and stuff because you're not afraid to say what you got to say, but you're definitely not afraid to. Nope, I'm not. I am who I am. I can't change fact. that. So, so I continue on you. about that experience. So, that. anyway, yeah. so then us girls went down into a special cove that they had because the casinos were own, owned by him and his father or his right. father at that time. And so that's Grace Kelly's son. Yeah. So we were all hanging around him, and all the girls were hanging, hanging on him. And I was like, "Do we have to be here?" Right. <laughs> and then he got more interested in me because I didn't of want course, to, of nothing course, to do with you know? him, you know. And then we actually sat and talked, and I actually liked him. And that's what nice that's what person. I saw from the interview that that's it didn't. You I mean the situation between y'all that escalated didn't oh, escalate God. to the last night. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you finally, you know, when you when you said, hey, I finally came in, you know, I came in, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Yep. To, so, that that, that kind of goes to show who you are as a person because, you know what I mean, for you to stand out to that person. And I, and I was to lucky enough it. to have dinner with, um, not Stephanie, what's the other sister, the oldest, Caroline. Okay. And her husband. So, mm. we had Yeah, I remember, some, yeah, yeah, remember that, that yeah. from the video, too. Yeah, that, uh, that was... And he had his own little special little, you know what I mean? Well, back then I could speak a little bit um, Italian because I lived in Europe and a little bit of French. Right. So um, she's talking across the table and she would switch up 
from French to, and I could understand what she was, parts yeah. of it, what it, what, and I would answer. Okay. And then she stopped and she'd go into Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I switch back. She know what I mean. She know what I'm saying. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But it was so much fun. We had such a good time. Stefano was her husband at the time. He died in that boating accident. Right. Where his boat flipped. He did the Monte Carlo, the boat races. And, oh, okay. And yeah. Instant death. And he was just such a nice guy. And I remember when we were going to the car. <laughs> To get our cars, we had to wait outside, and it was Cobblestone sh Street. Right. And <laughs> Albert and his brother-in-law were behind me and Caroline, or something right. like here. And Albert picked up the back of my dress and just showed him my ass. <laughs> and I turned around and I smacked him. Ooh. I go, "What are you doing?" Like that, and they didn't expect that. His sister right. was laughing. You know? She was like, she the one. You better leave her alone right there. She was like, she ain't playing. That's, that's the one right there. That's the one right there. <laughs> and so he picked up a fruit because we're the outside when you were waiting for the, the cars or whatever. Right. There was fruit there, and he pitched one at me, and I pitched one back hard at him. <laughs> we started running down the cobblestone street. He was chasing after me. And I stopped and I catch my breath and I go, oh my God. My eyes were like this. All this security is for you. They popped out of like. No way. <laughs> and I fell like to my TMZ. knees. Get out, get out, get out. It's just a fruit. It's a fruit. We never saw them until, you know, right. we went down the street. And I go, I was laughing. I go, all these are for you? You're not the king. <laughs> you what is said. this? <laughs> you ain't and special. He, he just thought it was so funny. Wow. We sat there and we laughed. That's cool. That, it was such a great story in my memories to remember that. That's, that's we good were, to have those memories, you know what I mean? It really was good. I really, really liked him. Man. You know, he just, he called me too late. I had already been with somebody and been married at that time. Right. And he called me a year later to tell me it was his birthday. Mm. He was thinking about me. I'd already been married. <laughs> so I want that play like two, months before, two months before. I could have lived that life. You could. I mean, you look yeah. like you look like royalty. Yeah. You know could've what I mean? Done it. Like I mean, that's that's what I that's what I enjoy about I mean watching your story. You know what I mean? Like all the stuff you done, man. It's 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 unreal. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's just work. It's that's beautiful though. You know what I mean? Like the scenery and the things that you probably seen, like Italy and I mean overseas and stuff. What was that like? Yeah. What was that? I mean, like the culture and everything. Was it, was, it? it was hard at first to get used to living in Paris because, you know, even in the States, there was like three or four channels that right. at that time, that's all we had. So okay. there was like, no, maybe seven at that time. And then I remember I dragged my black and white TV from Florida to <laughs> Paris because I wanted to watch I TV. Got it. <laughs> get it there. And oh, yeah. there was like two stations and every Wednesday they'd play an American, you know, for an hour. Right, right. That I get to watch that. And that's when I ended up reading so much. I got into all the Sydney Sheldon ended up is my favorite writer right, right. at that time was that I read every book of his and um, I didn't really go out I didn't party so so what did you do I mean just, just, sat and just read. I'd go on auditions during right. the day I mean you know wow. it and how long were you most work? of my walking or taking the buses or walking or the metro which is underground and stuff to get to the auditions all over and what was that like for like the oh um, like language barrier what did they drop it first but okay. then you realize that that the first language is the body language facts, and that's facts, what i learned facts, yeah i learned facts. that no matter what comes out of the mouth what their body is doing and i could figure it out right. so i got real in tune with that and i could tell and it's helped me through the years right because it makes Whatever you makes you read people a lot easier. You read people better. Right. And stuff. Yeah. So. So it was quiet. It was kind of quiet life. I, like I said, go on auditions and then the weekends I would, and I was right above a, 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 a bakery, and so every morning at four thirty I'd smell that bread. Ugh. I had to get up. Probably hungry as hell too. Like oh, those man. baguettes. Yeah, they were so good, and I would eat half of that every day with. Ooh. Coffee. Yeah. It was so good. 
Man, I, it was I, so I would, fresh. I would that would be. And how old were you at that time? Um, it was right after college, so I think it was twenty-two. Wow. Yeah. So fresh off the fresh uh, off the the education even at train straight to that was considered old. You know, right. Was, like, yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah. That's true. Teen, uh, back then it was, but the thing that kept me afloat was that, and I got to see Jerusalem on my off time. What was that like? Cool. I took a boat over there, around through, and that ocean was so eerie. I can imagine so so all the history going through and that. Then, and then they had, because in Israel, they always have guards and stuff. And so, like, we would have on our beaches, like, lifeguards. Right. There was guards posted at, like, those space between with shotguns and then the helicopters would fly back and forth. Some real shit right there. And the food was excellent there. Wow. We went out and did some nightlife. They would take us out, you know, eat good dinners and... It was good. So First you time lived I had a life. Oh God, I've had God. a great life. Really, I can yeah. imagine, man. You know what I mean, and that's and that's where you I mean it kind of takes us to the is to the now. You know what I mean? Like where where your life is now, and where everybody's life is at a certain point in time when you get past. Right. You know what I mean? The good, the bad, and the ugly. So. So I'm kind of. I feel like if. That I'm doing what I should have done back then, but I was lucky enough to experience that in between. Right, right. You know, that I probably would have been doing something in the medical field like what I'm doing now. Right. So. So that's what you, what, that is, that's what I kind of want to get it. What got you to this? What got you? Well, I know, I mean, I know the story, what got you here and everything. Right. So what got you into the medical field and, and doing what you do? What? Because I kind of wanted to give, I mean, I, 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 I love to nurture people. Right. And I, was, I still do it with the children that I've raised right, right. in Dallas and stuff that I've helped raise, not raised. Right. And so, um, and for all those who don't know, that is out here in Cologne, South Dakota, where we are at now. Yeah. We are at the sign in here with Miss Terry Waggle, right? Uh, 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 yep. Waggle. Waggle. You know what I mean? With the voiceovers. She got the voiceovers on YouTube. They, people, uh -huh. we, be narrating her. I mean, if you listen to this it, crazy Terry Wagle grew up in near film. I'm like, damn, she got her own voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like my dog got her own voiceover. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, we all, we all, we all, we. I mean, we've all. You all, you meet people and you come across people in life that you either supposed to meet or is either by chance or by a situation. That I mean, impression. Yeah, me moving yeah. here was probably one of the. I mean, that it led me to meeting you. you know I mean, I met I, through through my music. I've I've met so many. Like you mean through your your history, you've met so many good people. Right. You know what I mean? I've met so many great people in South Dakota. You know what I mean? So a lot of them will be. Probably I'll be getting in contact with a whole lot of them, maybe. So it's right. like a lot of friends that I've met. I've met through. Yeah, I love it here. I it really love it. it. Love it here. I go back home to see my mom. How often do you go Florida. back home? Oh well, now with COVID. Right, right. You know, if I flew there, I'd have to quarantine for two weeks, and I right. can't be away from my pets more than a week. <laughs> can't do it. I can't so do it. I just can't do it. So I gotta wait till they lift that. Although, right. uh, were you vaccinated? No, no. Why not? I don't know. I was just, I mean, all the all the ingredients, no, you know. No, no, we're know. all okay. You know, know. should get it done. I will. I, I I might think about it, but you know, I would feel if it's, get it done. If it's God's get will, it it's God's will. You know, I mean, we made it. I made it, we made yeah, it just for. Like that story of of. <laughs> let's see if I can tell this joke right. <laughs> so there's a flood. And this guy said, God's going to take care of it as he climbed to the second story of his home. Uh -huh. The water came up through the second story, so he climbed to the roof. Uh -huh. And so this boat goes by, and they say, come on, jump in, get in. And he says, no, God's going to take care of me. So he dies and goes to heaven. And so he said, God, why didn't you take care of me? He said, what more do I have to do? I sent a boat, and you wouldn't even get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I kind 
of smudge that up a little bit. I like, I like, I like that one, like though. Rescue. I like that one, though. I like that one, though. Hey, I, 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 yeah. said, I you asked for me. I yeah. sent you. You yeah. ain't do it. Now you're here. Now you're here questioning He's me. giving you that shot. Take it. Right, right. Why you, you know? sitting here questioning me? You, you knew you couldn't swim. You should have jumped on the boat. This, what other kind of disease are we going to get? You know, that yeah, comes with another pandemic true. of stuff, you know? Yeah. But as long as you're vac vaccinated, I think your body becomes stronger. I know I was sick with it a couple days, the first shot. Right. couple days, I had a really bad headache on the first one. The second one, I ended up coming to work and my fever was like 102. Ooh. And I remember going into the office and saying, I've got a high fever. And they immediately took me out to that back room. They go, we've got to check you, Ooh, you know? Yeah. And so I ended up negative, right. but it was from the second shot. And I was sick all day long and I had to work. Yeah, no, that's, that's the only reason why I can do it. I mean, I, my body, it, when, it, when it reacts me differently, I'm like, hey. Yeah, but yeah. it's not for that long of a time. I mean, yeah. look at four days after I don't know. I feel like my immune system is so much stronger since this shot. I don't know. Either that or I've come across so many germs now that I've built up. <laughs> You're immune to it. <laughs> well, you know, we do work in the healthcare field, so you know what I mean? That's that's always gonna be a big it's always gonna be a big fear, you know what I mean, when when even with a common cold, you know what I yeah. mean? So well, yeah, we got, we got that's true. Battery. I got this battery here. Is it recording? Let's okay. <laughs> I got the talking and I drain the battery out of this bad boy. But, uh, oh, uh, well, shoot, what are we sitting at? You know what I mean? We, it's to the streets, the podcast, man. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to have you here, Miss Terry. You. you know what I mean? I'm, I'm glad. I know, I know we could have got friends, or I wouldn't have come. Of you course, know? you know what I mean. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know we got a. And you're so good with those residents. Well, you know, I try. They love you. All them women. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. Them white women. You got them, like wrapped around your finger. They light up, Miss Karen. <laughs> Lights up. Well, you know how it is, how we record it, man. We back here on, yeah. on this one right here. So, okay. but yeah, you know what I mean. It's 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 beautiful to to have a, a the personalities that we have that's yeah. infectious that you want. You know what I mean you kind of you well, kind of kind of like we all kind of got that personality. It's good to be working in an environment where yeah. Yeah. we're all so kind that Fast. it's it's nice to see that so many. So many in, yeah, in one area. Yeah, yeah, because the day can be. <laughs> it can be shitty or it can be good. You know that. Oh and us God. three were in the bathroom. You know that. <laughs> With one of the residents. <laughs> it could be. And it was a rough day. Let's put it that way. It took three of us. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but you know, I me, mean, we do it. We do it for. We do it for the passion that we have for people, and that's what makes it makes it more. Every time I'm changing a brief or whatever that they're so helpless and right. they need that compassion right. yeah. and even love that's you it know, because it's a form of love what we give out right you right know? energy and emotion yep, you know that's it's, right. it, we're the everyday we're the everyday source for gossip or anything you know what i mean just to say hey i try you. not to you are run from that shit I don't even know how it is, man. It's, it's always gonna be like that when I'm you. I'm too old for that. Yeah, this is true. You know, you what know? I mean, you get you get past it, get to a certain age where life is just, and it I kind of at that life too. You know, what I mean, where my life is, you know, what I mean, I got the podcast and I've been working on. You know, what I mean, the music. You know, what I mean, I'm trying to venture into into the film area cause with the guy who who runs this. So we're trying to get into doing a, a film festival. So. Right. You know what I mean? I will be needing to be an actress, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it ain't nobody that I know other than you. <laughs> so, you know, I'm coming well, to I'm you. I'm sure you, you know mean lots. <laughs> In the future. But you know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? I know there's a lot of things that we could we could, we could, could definitely talk about, you know what I mean, Miss Terry? But, you know what I mean? I think I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to kind of end it right here because... You know what I mean? The next one, then I'm going to have to get you to come back. And I think when I get Absolutely. you to come back, I want to get you on. I don't want to talk about too much. Well, well no, I don't want to give say. out too much. You don't want to give out too <laughs> much. I just bring some stuff. I know you got a, you got a story. That you got you got, you got got stories. So, you know what I mean? You, next time you come back, you can bring your apparel. Yeah. 
Yep. You know what I mean? We could do a we could do a special Terry, you know what I mean, Terry show, you know what I mean? And <laughs> just make it all about you and your apparel, you know what I mean? We'll have to call my friends too. Yeah. Call up yeah, yes, Christy, Christy Kane, Kane, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Know. Yeah, that'll be fun. I'll put her on you know the, on uh FaceTime. Okay. And let her talk because we. Well, we could call her on Zoom and put her on the big one, on the yeah. big one right there. Yeah. Yeah. We got. We, we'll do that next time. Yeah, because man. we've got stories, she and I. I can imagine. <laughs> and, I watched some of her and interviews fun too. Fun stories too. I watched some of her she's interviews too. Yeah, she girl. don't. She don't hold no punches back either. Nope. She got, she's she very strong. Oh my god. Very she strong got a, girl. She got, a, you know, I mean, I know in the, in the world, you know, what I mean, that she got Very a mouthpiece kind. on her. Oh yeah, she do. Well, she's got that show, you know. Yeah, she got a podcast night, too. Night, what is it called? Night, night, oh. life, night, something of what? Playboy that she does. Oh. So if oh. we talk, we will tie one in. So she's been asking me to go on the show, so we'll bring them on in. So I'm we'll do, maybe do a three. You could do it. Yeah. We'll do a three. A. You know what I mean. <laughs> You know, I'm with that. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of which, you know what I mean? I ain't going to go there, but I will say, you know what I mean? Uh, Thank you. You're, Thank you're you. an amazing lady, you know what I mean? Thank you. I ain't going to say what I can't say on camera, but hold on. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to try to.